Hi, and welcome to Meet the Teacher. Today we are with Mr Hargreaves. First question, Mr Hargreaves. Yes. When did you decide to become a teacher? Um, I think I've always wanted, in the back of my mind, to be a teacher, um, ever since I was a, a kid, really. Um, when I was younger, I was sort of thinking of a few different things. I wanted to be a policeman at one time, a journalist, um, loads of different things that I wanted to do. But in the end, I think I always kept coming back to this idea of becoming a teacher. And then about four or five years ago, I really thought I really, I did a little bit of an experience in a school, figuring out what it was like, you know, on a voluntary basis. Mm -hmm. And then I, I think I realised in the end that that's what I wanted to do. So I'd probably say definitely about four or five years ago. If you could describe your personality in one word, what would that word be? Hilarious. How come? You only said one word. I don't have to go any further, do I? You only said one word. <laughs> no, um, I'm only joking. I don't know. Uh, do I have to big myself up here? No, just... Approachable. Um. You're I'd approachable. say. Approachable, yeah. I don't think people are scared to come and talk mm -hmm. to me. Like they might be with certain other members of staff. I'm not saying they are, but some other people have a personality where students are maybe a little bit nervous to go and speak to a teacher. I think I'm quite approachable. Anyone can come and just have a chat with me, discuss mm -hmm. anything they might want to discuss. So, mm -hmm. approachable is what I'm going for. What do you like about Harrop so far? So far? Um, mm -hmm. Well, it's my second year, and I just think it's not like any other school, really. Um, just the way things are done here are just it's so different. Um, things are relaxed, but not, in, not too relaxed. Um, you can have a, a good laugh with students, okay? And I just don't think students are worried about maybe offending a teacher. I don't think students would ever insult a teacher. That's not, that's not the point I'm trying to make. I think just students and teachers have got a really good working relationship. You know, mm -hmm. students can have a laugh with the teacher. The teacher can have a laugh with the students. Nobody feels offended. It's just nice, a relaxed atmosphere. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm, I'm really enjoying so far. What qu qualifications have you took to become a teacher right now? Um, well, I suppose we could start right from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you're stu currently studying for GCSE, so I did my GCSEs um, back in Burnley, where I'm from. Then went off to college to do my A-levels. Um, did an A-level in history, law and English. Then went off to university, studied, studied at Manchester University um, for three years, history degree. Um, and then after that, I had a couple of years where I just worked, got a little bit of experience in work. And then I went back and did my, um, my teaching qualification, which is uh, called a PGCE. It's a one year course where you, uh, you learn actually what it's like in the classroom and you have placements at different schools, getting some experience. Um, so I did that and then right off the back of that, came to Harrop. How do you feel about the students at Harrop? Um, not like any other students I've ever worked with. And I know I don't have much experience of, of being at different schools, just a couple of schools on my PGCE, on my placement, but um, the students here are just one of a kind, really, I think. Um, loud, but loud in a good way. Um, they're not afraid to tell you what they think. They're not afraid to voice their opinions, whether that's positive or negative, possibly, at times. Um, they're very honest. Um, but I think deep down, students, are, students want to do well. And maybe certain students might not always um, tell you they want to do well, but I think there's, a, there's, a, there's an honesty deep down about students that they want to do well, they want to achieve, they're prepared to learn, um, but they want to have a good time while they're doing it at the same time as well. They want to have a little bit of fun, a little mm -hmm. bit of a laugh. Um, so that's, that's how I'd sum them up, really. What inspired you to teach your special subject? Um, it's going to sound really cheesy, but... Um, the history teacher that I had at school was probably the best, the, well, he definitely was the best teacher I've ever had. He just made history really interesting. Um, I was always interested in history anyway, but just the way that he was in the class, um, not necessarily with the, the way that he taught the subject, just the way he was, his, his, uh, the way he created an environment in the classroom and his personality in the classroom, I just thought was amazing, the way that he was with the students. And it's something that inspired me um, a, to become a teacher, and B, to become a history teacher specifically, because I just ended up loving history that much that I wanted to take it on, take it further, and I, I, I took it further and then ended up doing it myself. So if I could be half as good a teacher as he was, then I'll be pretty happy. What makes a good teacher, in your opinion? Um, patience would be the main one, I'd say. Uh, you've got to have patience. Um, I think you've got to have a sense of humour. Um, 
you have to because you're going to be bombarded day in day out with things that you cannot prepare for okay you can always prepare a lesson you can always prepare resources but you cannot prepare for some of the things that happen in the classroom um, some of the things that students might say mm -hmm. nothing offensive but some of the things students might say might completely startle you and you think well where the hell has that question come from because the way I mean it's a good example you've asked me some strange questions and I think well where's that come from so I think you've just got to always have a little bit of a sense of humour and just be prepared to answer anything. Why did you choose Harrop Ford as a place to teach? Why did I choose Harrop? Um, I saw the website first of all. Um, I was looking through when I was applying for jobs on my training course. I saw the website, I saw the job application. Um, then I started to do a little bit of a research about the school. Um, and I just noticed that it was a very similar sort of school in terms of background of the students, um, background of the staff to the one that I actually went to uh, and the one that I went to when I was your age and I just thought that it seemed like the sort of environment where I'd fit in. Um, I wouldn't want to go to a school where all the students are always perfect if you know what I mean and I'm mm -hmm. not saying student, the behaviour is bad here because it's not but I, d I wouldn't want to go to a school where there's no atmosphere mm -hmm. and the students are all just sat there in roles and you get nothing from them, they don't, they don't challenge you with the questions, they just sit there and they listen to everything you say and you don't get any response from them. Um, so when I saw the, the background of the school and the way that the students were, especially when I came for interview as well, mm -hmm. um, that made it up in my mind that hopefully if I was offered the job then I would be accepting it like straight away and luckily enough they offered me it and, uh, and I didn't hesitate, I took it straight away, I just said yes, I was so pleased when I got that phone call. If you had a chance to have a superpower, what would it be and why? Uh, I've got to be careful with this one. Superpower? Um, I would say probably predicting the future. I think that would be the power that I could have because then I could uh, maybe stop potential things from happening and just know what's happening, what's going to happen to the world and good or bad and mm -hmm. see if I could be a part of it. So predicting the future, I reckon. How do you keep calm when um, students are being disruptive? Um, I think I'm naturally quite a calm, sort of relaxed person anyway. Um, I think you just have to sometimes consider what the students have to deal with throughout the day, mm. if it's late in the day. Um, knowing that anything that happens in the lesson is not necessarily personal to you. Um, just understanding, yeah, that maybe the students just had a bad day and they're just frustrated about things or... Um, and just understand that it happens uh, and not let it get you down. It happens, it's about how you deal with it, you've got to deal with it in a calm way, um, but you've got to be decisive at the same time. You can't um, let students take the mick a little bit, but I just think you've got to be calm, just make your point and then just move on and, and forget. You can never hold a grudge, I don't think, against, against anyone really in any walk of life, but particularly with, with students in a lesson. If you hold a grudge against that student, then the relationship and things aren't going to move forward so I think it's better to just talk about it um, forget about it and then move on. What do you do in your spare time? What's spare time? I don't think there's such a thing when you're a teacher unfortunately um, but when I do get spare time um, play, play football or try to play football <laughs> um, for a local team a six a side team in uh, just where I'm from with a few of my mates uh, play a lot of tennis um, played tennis for years um, so football, tennis, um, watch football as well. I've got a season ticket at Burnley Football Club, which nobody will have heard mm. of, I'm, I'm sure, when this video goes out online. But I've got a season ticket there. Um, so sport mainly, mainly into sport. That's my massive thing. What do you know about the local area? Um, if I'm being perfectly honest, before I arrived at Harrop, I didn't know an awful lot. Um, I started doing the research on the area when I applied for the job. Um, and I know that Little Holton and Walk Dinner areas that, in terms of economy, um, are, fair, can, are fairly deprived areas. People, a lot of people don't have a lot of money, but I, I haven't been out into the community that much, but just from meeting parents and meeting, obviously, students, I know that there's a real sense of community spirit within the area as well, and people are, are looking out for each other, which I think is a good thing, and people are always trying to think of ways to improve the area. Um, there's a lot of community activities going on. Uh, within the area as well, which I think is important. So I think I do think there's a real sense of pride in the area, um, which I think is great. And people are very proud and defensive almost, not in a bad way, but very defensive of the area that they live in. 
and it's very similar and I'm going to draw a comparison again but to the area that I grew up in as well things are, are very very similar there in terms of economic background but people are very friendly people are very proud to be where they're from and they'll defend where they're from until the death really so I really admire that about about the area are there any barriers to teaching at Harrop? Barriers? Um, I think one major barrier to teaching at Harrop is I think students at time at times um, don't have much confidence at Harrop. I think there's a lot of students that don't feel that they, based on the fact that they come from an area that isn't hasn't got a lot of mo a lot of money, I think students can sometimes think that they're never going to be able to do the things that they might dream of doing, the things that they want to do. I think they sometimes think that because they're from Little Hulton, they can't do it, and that can sometimes be a real challenge. Uh, it's a challenge that can be overcome, but it sometimes can be a real challenge because people because they don't think they can achieve and because things aren't, they're not, not naturally getting things right straight away, this, some people can tend to sort of either try and give up or uh, mask their lack of confidence with stupid behaviour really. I think that can happen at times. Um, it's all about trying to tell the person, the student, that they've got, they can achieve and trying to build that confidence and, and work with them to let them know that they can do whatever they set their mind to. I'd say that's a real challenge, but I think it's one that we're winning with. I think it's one that's improving year in, year out. Do you run any after-school activities at school? Um, not as much as I would like to, although there is something, hopefully when the weather gets a little bit better um, and the tennis courts get put, put back up um, in the summer, uh, we're looking to start a t an after-school tennis, cl tennis club for, well, year seven to 11. Anyone that wants to come along and, and try and learn how to play tennis, I'll. I'll be happy to, to run that, so hopefully it's something I'm looking to bring in. What's your favourite school meal? Well, I just like chips on a Friday. That's it. Any sauce? Yeah, tomato sauce, always. I'm not a heathen. What is your favourite music? My favourite music? Um, I don't know, I like all sorts of music. Uh, you're going to probably laugh at me for this, but I'm into quite a lot of old 60s, 70s soul music, a lot of Motown music. Um, I really like going even further back than that, big band music, swing music, Frank Sinatra, that sort of thing. I love all that. I'd never admit that to any student here, apart from the fact that I've just done it on TV. Um, but do you want me to be cool and say, try and name someone who's out now that I like? Major Lazer are really good at the moment. I'm really liking mm -hmm. their album. If there was one thing that you could improve about her, what would it be? One thing I could improve? Yeah. Um, my room. The computer in my room keeps breaking <laughs> and it's causing me a little bit of an issue. But apart from that, not a lot. I don't know, no, let's be serious about it. Um, one thing I can improve about Harrop, I think, um, just make sure, it's going back to what I looked at earlier, making sure the aspiration of students and the drive and the motivation to know that they, they can achieve what they want to achieve and not to be sort of put off by the, the barriers that they might see living in Little Holton, trying to remove that. And I know that's not going to happen overnight, but I think it's something that once we tackle that and once students start to realise that they can achieve, I think the school can go to even greater heights than they're already, they're already at. Who is your favourite celebrity? Um, nobody that's ever been on any reality show. None of them. Okay. Because they've made a living out of absolutely nothing. And I yeah. hate all that. And I know that might offend some people that are watching here, some students that are watching, because they probably love... Big Brother and I'm a Celebrity and Geordie Shaw and all that nonsense, but somebody is actually using their fame for a good reason, um, let me think. Stephen Fry is a good one. I love Stephen Fry. Mm -hmm. um, an intelligent man, funny man, um, does a lot of charity work, loves football as well. Stephen Fry's got to be up there, but also, and I shouldn't admit this as well, um, do love myself a little bit of Michael Bublé. I'm a, I like Bublé. <laughs> I know that's a bit embarrassing, but hey, I've said it. I met him, you know, shook his hand. Never washed <laughs> his hand since. It's true. OK. What was the last book you read? The last book I read, um, don't get a chance to read as many books as I'd like to these days. Unfortunately, we just don't have the time. But um, the last book that I started mm -hmm. and still haven't got around to finishing is something that I read in college and I'm rereading it, um, Wuthering Heights. I okay. uh, love that book in college and it's a book that we, we studied in English and I wanted to go back and read it again. Um, but I got about halfway through and haven't had a chance to finish it. But Wuthering Heights is the last one. 
where would you say is the weirdest place you've ever read a book? The weirdest place I've ever read a mm -hmm. book? It's a bizarre question. Um, the weirdest place I've ever read a book? Oh, I'll tell you, I went to, um, I went to New York last year and mm -hmm. I was in um, Times Square with a couple of my mates and they were looking at all these wondrous sites and I just found a like, little bookshop I bought a book from there and a book that I've been wanting for ages that I don't think they even sold in England um, and I couldn't find it anywhere and I, I was reading it whilst all my mates were looking at all the sites around New York I was reading my book <laughs> so maybe that. What is the weirdest food you've ever eaten? The weirdest food? Um, I'm quite traditional when it comes to food. I, mm -hmm. I get a little bit scared of new food, so I, I tend to eat um, quite boring, bland food. But let me think, the weirdest food. I ate, I ate octopus once. That okay. was a bit weird. It was like really slimy. Didn't really like that. Um, I could never go and I'm a celebrity, <laughs> eating all those like cockroaches bugs. and stuff and bugs and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think octopus is probably the weirdest, and that's not even that weird, is it, really? But no. yeah, I'm pretty boring when it comes to food. Little Horton has a million pounds to spend. What would you spend that million pounds on? Ooh, um, it's a tough one. I think I'd spend it in a couple of areas. I think one of the main, the main things I'd spend the money on would might be uh, a library, and mm -hmm. that sounds I know that sounds boring. But a, a library and a place that, like a modern style library with books, but with loads of computer facilities and stuff as well. Because mm. um, I think that it would be good for the community, it would be good for students as well. Um, what else? I don't know. Tennis courts, proper tennis courts. <laughs> then I could actually start some real tennis in Little Holton as well. Get people a little bit more active. Because I don't know business. that there's that much, apart from I know there's a cricket club. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I haven't seen that much in terms of sporting, sporting facilities in Little Holton, so maybe some sports facilities as well. That's it, everyone. I would just like to thank Mr Hargreaves for spending his time, and there will be another one soon. Thanks. Thanks, see ya.